Okay, so the latest version of Android 15 for Raspberry Pi 5 now supports the Linux terminal. Let's show you how to set it up and some of the things you can do with it. So I'm going to install it to this NVMe drive, so let's plug that into my USB hub. And let's launch the browser. And do a search for Consta Kang. And we'll click on the Raspberry Pi 5 one. And this top one, AOSP Android 15. And we're looking for the zip file. You can do upgrades. I've got a separate video on how to upgrade if you're upgrading for the previous version. But I'm going to do a fresh install. So let's click on this and download. I've already downloaded it. So let's launch Imager. Choose OS. And scroll down to use custom. And then we're looking for the latest version, which is this one, 18th of March. Choose storage. And this is my NVMe drive. And next, don't make any changes. And yes. And pop the password in. Okay, so that's finished. But now what we need to do is open up the boot partition. And go into config.txt. And look for the bit where it's got boot device. So you can see here. So the default for Android is SD card. You can use a USB device like a USB SSD, but I'm using an NVMe drive. So what I need to do is delete this, but then put a hash in here. And now I can save that. And let's shut all this down. And I need to switch drives now. So this is Linux in here. Let's take that out. Pop the Android drive in. I'm just going to let it boot for the first time. Okay, so it doesn't take very long at all to boot. Now I'm going to shut that down by dragging down from the top left hand corner and clicking on the power one and power off. I'm going to take out the Android drive and I'm going to boot back with KDE Plasma or any other Linux operating system you choose. So let's start that up. And I'm going to plug this drive into the caddy because I need to access it. I'll wait till it's got the boot. Yeah, so it's booting now. Although it shouldn't boot off this Android because it's set to NVMe boot and this is now going through USB. And log in. So now I can launch Gparted. If you haven't got Gparted, then you can install it with sudo apt install Gparted. So this is the drive that I'm running Linux from. If I click on this drop down menu, this is the drive I've got Android on. And as you can see, it's got a load of unallocated space. So we need to expand this. So click on this square and right click and resize and then drag it all the way over to the right and tap resize and the tick and apply. And we can close that down now. You can see that it's using all of the drive. So let's shut down. And I'm going to unplug this one. So this is Android on this one. Let's take Linux out and pop Android in there. No more disk swapping after this. And then boot up. And to enable the terminal, we need settings. So we drag down and click on settings. Scroll down to about tablet. And go for build. There you go, this one. And just keep left clicking. You're now a developer. So now we've got a system. And you can see with the way storage, 9% used 116 gig free. That's because we expanded the partition. So on the right hand side here, we've now got developer options. So if we scroll down, one of the options is to do with terminal. So Linux development environment, click on that and enable it. And if we go back and hit home, when we drag up from the middle, you can see we've now got terminal, which wouldn't have been there before. So let's click on that and then install, so 565 megabytes. 
I did a short video on this and it was 635 megabytes. So they've obviously been adapting it, preparing terminal, and we're in. This doesn't have a graphical user interface at this stage. I'll try one in a minute, but let's do some things that don't need that. So sudo apt install neofetch. Oh, we might need to update first. So update. Okay, let's try that again. And yes. Okay, so that's done. So let's type in neofetch. And you can see Debian Linux 12 bookworm arch 64 unknown product. And then we've got the kernel 6.1.0 arm 64 and it's showing us four megabytes of RAM. Now is that, I think this is an eight gig pi. Sudo at install htop and yes and htop to launch that and this is the, the system resources now this is not showing what android's doing at the moment this is just the linux bit and if i do control c i can quit out of that i can do sudo at and list and this will show me a list of various different things that i can install again without a graphical user interface so things that have got graphics rather than running in the terminal aren't going to run but as you can see there's loads of things there but i can also do apt search and say for instance firefox and it will show me what's available and we've got different versions of firefox esr here with language packs so i thought i'd try and install a graphical user interface and i'm going to use task cell for that so sudo at install task cell and yes so sudo task cell you need sudo to be able to install so these are all graphical user interfaces now i did try and managed to crash the system doing lxde so i think i might try xfce what else have we got here nothing else really uh, they're the kind of lightest ones that are there so press space press tab and you can see i'm on ok and if i press enter that will start to install and hopefully it won't do what it did before which was freeze around about 62 percent okay nearly there 95 percent and i can see it's installing loads of programs as well with the gui so i think that's finished so let's go back into task cell it should show yeah xfce is already there so if i tab down and cancel let's try should we try reboot i think i'll do reboot first or maybe sudo reboot okay so I'll drag up and click on terminal and let's try start x only console users are allowed to run the x server now i did try for quite a lot longer to get a desktop environment running and then i thought i'd do a bit of research and i did find this blog from deepaknes.com and uh, it says, can I install a GUI on it? No, sadly, cannot install a desktop environment on it, as Google has already made clear, and they tried running sudo task cell, but nothing happens. Obviously, task cell worked for me, but it looks like you can't install a graphical user interface, which is a disappointing thing, because Chrome OS works brilliant with Linux. You can launch the apps, you can install things, you can have a file explorer, all sorts of things. It's really, really good. I've got separate videos on that. So what I thought I would try is downloading one of my videos. So if I open the browser and go to my channel, I thought if I just try one video, so let's go with this one. Let's just pause that and share and just grab that and go back to the terminal and we can type in wget-c and then paste that in because you can paste between Android and the terminal. And if we hit enter, and it saves the file. So resolving, connecting, request sent, move permanently, location. But I don't know with the files because again, unlike Chrome OS, it doesn't seem to have access either way. So this is all just Android files here. And if I go into Raspberry Pi 5, I don't think there's anything there. I mean, if I pick download, I'm pretty sure it doesn't show up in there. Yeah, 
So I don't think it's something I would use, certainly at this stage. It'd be great to see a graphical user interface because then on an Android 15 mobile phone with an HDMI output, you could have a full Linux desktop with a graphical user interface. But maybe it's a work in progress. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.